Ladies and gentlemen, the next speaker is Ms. Rashi Suvarna, Head of Procurement, Global Sourcing Leadership and Strategist at Boringer Angel Hill. Ms. Rashi has almost 20 plus years of experience. Uh, she is skilled in budgeting, customer relationship management, change management, contract management, contract negotiation, communication, and supplier development. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for our next speaker, Ms. Rashi Suvarna. So, good afternoon everyone. Is it afternoon? Yes, I think. <laughs> so, I'm Ashi Swarna and I head the procurement for Boringa Ingelheim. Slightly tongue twister, um, but it's the world's largest family owned uh, pharma social company, and hence uh, you will not find this name much. But uh, of course, uh, uh, it is proud to be associated with Boringa. Uh, because it has very high values in terms of uh, being in the pharma industry and also the largest uh, annual health uh, pharma company across, across the globe and uh, also into human pharma and in India we are leading in the diabetes sector and hence they are very niche products uh, which are marketed in India especially in the diabetes uh, space. Uh, coming from an experience perspective, I, I have cut two industries, uh, right from uh, a tire industry into manufacturing, into shared services, uh, into telecom, into uh, tooling industry, that's the capex, uh, into also uh, a chemical industry and many other sectors currently in the farm. So uh, if you see my slides will be more generic because I have cut two major industries. Uh, and work the uh, right of manufacturing into the sourcing and uh, also into the shared service setup. So what we are going to talk today is about effective sourcing strategies and of course uh, the transform procurement uh, operations, three being very different. So I have just segregated them. When we talk about effective sourcing strategies, uh, it's more from a sourcing perspective and how to really make it effective is what we will talk about. And of course the uh, transformation which is more related to the operations and how we keep transforming these operations to better the processes and make it even uh, faster or maybe uh, you know, tweak them, turn around times, I mean, the tag or uh, you know, better in terms of uh, say the value that we bring to our stakeholders. So, moving on to the next slide, this is a very uh, generic slide which uh, I have prepared, which is a normal process. Where we have uh, a buyer, uh, there is a buyer who is actually looking out for the goods and services. Thereafter, we have a uh, lot of suppliers whom we connect with. We have pricing terms provided by the suppliers, the requisitions, negotiations, uh, all of this process happening a purchase order raised, uh, a contract being put in place, and of course, uh, you know. The, the contract being awarded, legal agreements being drawn upon. So this is an end-to-end -end process that we actually, each one of us may be following. What we have evolved over time is how we have uh, made this paperless. I just listened to all of the speakers before who emphasized on digital, uh, but what a digital eventually bring about a paperless process. Uh, and hence here, this entire process is being evolved with time because I saw from a manufacturing setup where we were signing purchase orders to a click of a button and the uh, you know, contract or maybe uh, there is a signature done on the contract or maybe the order is issued to the uh, supplier. So what really, how did this really build? I mean it came from being more strategic in nature, it came from the processes that we define and how we really define. Basically, the, the process starts with the business because if there is no business, uh, how do we really procure and what do we really procure? So basically, analyzing and understanding the business line is very essential. Uh, for coming from a farmer, uh, understanding the animal health business, understanding the human farmer business, it was very technical in nature, but it is very, very key to understand uh, the business lines, first of all, to understand what you are going to procure. Secondly, reviewing these spends. These spends 
which are the high strand areas, which are the areas which are tail strand areas, which uh, you know probably we don't focus on. And this was an area which we really worked upon in within BI because that was also a huge strain. Uh, generally, we just focus on the high strain and we tend to negate or neglect the tail strain area. But if you really see, there is a lot of strain in the tail strain area as well, which when you consolidate also becomes a part of your high strain. So please focus on that area as well, which we, when we did, we really found out that also to be an uh, area of high strain. Engaging with the stakeholders is something that uh, is very, very key because uh, it, it becomes very, very essential to engage with your stakeholders, to understand them, to kind of know where uh, other areas which they want to really focus upon uh, during contract stage so that you know once a contract is drawn there is you know no go back and again reopening the contracts and it's a back and forth so it becomes too tedious so hence it's very important to understand your stakeholders as well. Aligning with the sourcing strategy because uh, nowadays we work with the concept of category management which we go to the next slide as well in detail. Category management is something where you dissect your spend into various categories. So it becomes easier for you all to really manage each of the categories. Like uh, within uh, BI, we have three spends that is the international sourcing, the direct, as well as the indirect sourcing. So within that also we have subcategories. So it becomes easier for you all to manage your spends. It becomes easier for you all to get the required skills for those categories and subcategories. Because not everyone is really perfect at doing so it's always better to have those categories. Um, looking at analyzing the supply market and creating a supplier portfolio, this is something that uh, we really focus upon because many times we just ignore some emails that just come from some suppliers, marketing, you know, sin, or just as an introductory email. But uh, what we do is we save it whenever we have a time, kind of evaluate what is new, what is that supplier trying to tell us, what are they trying to sell to us. That's very key and essential so that you are in line with what's there in the market. It may be relevant, it may be irrelevant. It's always good to have that information as to what is there in the market. Hence, uh, I would say we should never ignore those emails, but if you don't have the time, please park it. But whenever you do have the time, go back, reflect, see what that person is trying to sell. It always helps. It only builds your knowledge. So that's something that we keep doing. Uh, and evaluating suppliers wherever required as well. Uh, defining requests of proposal, uh, criteria and templates. I'm sure there are a lot of systems now. So, you know, we really don't need to work manually. This is readily available. You can use a lot of systems. Processes are already inbuilt in those systems. So, here I would say that it's absolutely uh, not essential. It's only, you would, you know, inputting the required data and you get, uh, you know, from the suppliers what exactly expectation. Yeah. Uh, negotiate with selected suppliers, of course this is something that we all do as well. Uh, I'm sure many of uh, the previous speakers have really spoken about this subject. So I will not delve much into that. Uh, integrate suppliers into existing processes, onboarding of any new vendors, outsourcing providers. Uh, this is also something that uh, we should really evaluate, especially the last point of outsourcing providers. Many times we end up doing the end-to-end -end process, which sometimes if we really outsource and look at cutting off, how does it really help? Is it really something that I should be doing as a core business? Or can I look at outsourcing this piece and uh, you know getting the best results or the quality product at a cheaper rate, as well as uh, maybe you know getting something off my shoulders and seeing how it can be done in a better way, in a better process is also something that. We can really look at from a strategic sourcing perspective. Track performance metrics and optimize. This generally is done through uh, agreements where uh, every agreement is KPI driven, measured, uh, and evaluated at periodical, uh, say, time frames, which is six months or one year. Uh, leave it to your stakeholders so that when it comes for renewal, you make them responsible as to how uh, the vendor has really performed. Because in the operations piece, generally the procurement is not involved in day to day basis. So when it really comes for renewal, it becomes really tough for us whether we just go ahead and renew 
or whether we need to evaluate new suppliers or, or we need to look at uh, you know, many more options. So it becomes very easier if we have a KPI driven contract which makes it very easier for us to uh, measure the performance of the existing suppliers. Uh, I put this just as a pictorial representation for demand forecast uh, because uh, demand and forecast is something that is very dynamic. Uh, it will differ from industry to industry, uh, especially in the FMCG, they have a vast uh, the products which uh, and also in the pharma uh, which uh, have a time frame or a lifespan. Uh, in pharma there is also uh, the temperature monitored uh, medicines which go at uh, minus 2 degrees, minus 4 degrees uh, and hence having a forecast or having uh, those uh, you know material really uh, uh, kind of fast moving products you can say or maybe uh, you can say products which have low demand or which have a higher lead time. All these permutations and combinations will really help you to build a accurate forecast as well as build a, a proper inventory level for all of these products. So it is many factors that we really have to uh, focus upon when we are looking at the forecast, looking at the supply chain how this product will be readily available. So it is a very complex scenario where we have to combine all of these aspects and, and thereafter uh, see if the material will be really available to the business for sale. It is not only the focus but also ensuring the availability of the material at the ground level. So that is how I look at it when we look at a forecasting but it is very easy to say that yes I want X material by this time. But is it really possible? Is something that we really need to understand. Are the inventory levels there? Can we match the demand? Can we really look at getting it within the time frame? All of these aspects is something that we really need to connect the dots to ensure that your demand and the forecast that is given and the actual availability of the product is available for the business. We talk about negotiations, pricing and rebates. Uh, I just uh, did uh, some uh, you know, points on a little different note which talks about duplication, which talks about redundancies, which talks about more of cons uh, consolidation of procurement efforts. Because what happens is uh, generally we see that uh, many of the products are duplicated or maybe there is a little change, uh, you know, as uh, I saw one of the previous slides where the bikes, they, you know, there were many SEUs. So, uh, it was just a revision of each of the bikes and hence they kind of standardized uh, the MRO supplies for those bikes. But in this case, it was a classical elimination of, uh, you know, the redundancy to duplication of the MRO spares that they were trying to represent and say that you know, standardize everything. That was a classic example where uh, in the elimination of the uh, duplicate uh, spares uh, was, was done. So maybe that is something that I would put here as an example. Also from the pro process of consolidating, as I said, consolidate your tail and sweat and you will see what a value you get to the organization. When you just take out your tail and sweat and you push it to your existing suppliers, you will see that the value that you generate by reducing the number of invoices that you pay out, by reducing the number of purchase orders that you punch out for small spends, for, by reducing the entire process of having so many suppliers, having them in your database, it's a cost. So you will see that all of these spends when you put it together, it really reduces and consolidates into a very high value. Uh, simplify negotiations with suppliers. Uh, this is something when you define accurately your scope, it becomes very easy for the suppliers as well. Uh, when you are more quantifiable in the RFPs, it becomes more easier for the suppliers to really quote. So make your RFPs more quantifiable, more KPI driven and also ensure that the KPIs are mapped with the measurement. It makes it more easier for the suppliers as well. Uh, 
create opportunities to reduce prices, save on time and efforts is something that I would combine since the time is just little. Uh, so create opportunities to reduce price, sale and spend as I said is an opportunity which you can find in organizations. I think uh, you will surely uh, get back and save a lot of time and effort in that. And also boost the quality of service you provide and focus communication. This is something that I also spoke about earlier. Uh, strategic ways to find suppliers. So we talked about uh, you know communication, where uh, you know the email chains that we spoke about, communicating with the stakeholders. Sometimes the stakeholders also evaluate in the market what is there, your peer industries, what's happening in their space, who are they, connect with your uh, you know competitors. Of course, they may not bring in information with the business, but you can always connect for just knowing who the suppliers are in that space. So that can be a good mode in terms of communication. Sharing information only, you will always find that your stakeholders uh, would uh, refrain from sharing information or keeping procurement in the loop earlier. So it's always better to keep in touch with your stakeholders as well as to what is happening, uh, you know, knowing from them what are the projects that are upcoming in advance, so that it becomes easier for you all also to align. Uh, it also is a culture which needs to be embedded in the company, it doesn't come that easy, uh, early involvement of procurement, uh, but always you can, uh, you know, just have an ideation or, you know, a very healthy discussion in terms of innovative solutions, keep giving them so that, you know, uh, you kind of uh, speak to your stakeholders very often. This was something, do I have time? Uh, can I call this last slide? This is last slide. So uh, this is something that uh, I look at as category management that I spoke about. So the core area being category strategy, sourcing strategy, as well as supply relationship, which forms the core of the circle. Then you then is the content that you have where you define the timelines, you define the scope, you define uh, you know who's going to be your sponsor, your leaders who's going to lead the procurement, and of course your stakeholders who's going to be. Yes, that forms the content. And the outer layer is basically the context, how you really drive it uh, with your stakeholders. So these three layers when really implemented will help you get a lot of savings, help you get you executing a lot of projects in every space and will really uh, you know, help you drive the change management that is required within your company. So this is something that I uh, would like to present. And uh, that's the last thing. You have to get going with good talking and begin doing it. So, all that I would like to say. Any questions? Thanks for the insight session. So, you have on the point that consolidated things. I also come from medical industry, come from the So, I have a question like, uh, when you take consolidated things, every consolidated thing like any changes I have to do some um, changes. It needs a VNP. Like, I don't know what kind of VNP comes in my house in the industry. I was just thinking from my perspective, like, because we are in the same situation right now. But VNP, when you relate VNP, the ROI is a challenge. Yeah. How do you watch the entire kind of challenges? Uh, so when I talk about uh, these situations where VAB is required, it takes time. So you have to take it step by step. You can't change it overnight. So you will have to complete the entire process. So that time your supplier, the existing supplier is there, but parallelly you kind of keep evaluating other suppliers as well, and then you know you kind of look at consolidating uh, your supplier base there. So you have to first identify which products you would be looking at to consolidate or which sales when you are looking at, identify who the supplier will be, work with them and thereafter uh, you know kind of uh, change uh, hands or kind of, but it has to go parallel, you can't just overnight in a pharma change a supplier, that's not possible, I know, it takes for us three years to even evaluate and get a new supplier on board, it's not that easy, because there are a lot of processes, and especially for us we don't have a manufacturing in India, so uh, all of our products are imported. So when we have international sourcing, the KPIs, CSMs, uh, KSFs that go from India to our manufacturing sites in US or Germany, it's not easy to change suppliers. It takes two years, three years. So it's not easy. 
Thank you. And, and yeah, thank you so much.